Sam, thank you so much for having us today. Can you tell us where on NASA Langley are we right now? We are in the Aerospace Composite and Model Development section. This is where we build research model aircraft and spacecraft for our NASA researchers. Wow, really cool. Uh, so, so introduce yourself. Who are you? What do you do here? My name is Sam James, and I'm a mechanical engineering technician in the Aerospace Composite and Model Development section. We build research model aircraft and spacecraft for our NASA researchers. Very cool. You have an awesome job. So you brought one of your models with you. Does this thing actually fly? Yes, it does. And what's so unique about this model, it has small jet engines, and they fly up to 200 miles per hour. Is this one of the engines? Yes, this is one of the engines. And what we use is kerosene and oil mixture for them. Let you take a look at it. Wow. So, so you've got these in our, our airplane here, and then we also see that you've brought some other materials with you. What are these things we've got here on the table? So this material here is used to fabricate the model itself. And so what's so unique about it is we apply resin to the fiberglass, and it cures within about eight hours. So what we're looking at is making test specimens as you see here. And as you can see, the lines in here, it's made of honeycomb. And we have a honeycomb, basically it's made like a sandwich. And here's a honeycomb piece without the own. fiberglass. Okay, so the fiberglass went on either side of the honeycomb. Yes. And that actually makes up the body here. Yes, so this fiberglass and the honeycomb here is part of the body that you see here. Cool. And, and what does that do for this model? Like, it, does it make it lighter? Does it make it faster? Yes, it makes it lighter. On top of that, we also have to apply the resin on a vacuum. And this is the resin that we use. <laughs> so it takes about eight hours to harden. And let's see. Oh, that, that is definitely hard. <laughs> a note to self, don't leave your fingers sitting in resin for eight hours. <laughs> you might get stuck. So this model, how fast does it fly when you, when you fly it? So this model is actually uh, flown by one of our test pilots, and they will also have a spotter who actually timed the model because it only has enough fuel for a 12-minute flight. So when he gets down to two minutes, he counts off to 10, 9, <laughs> 8, 7. Get to the so ground. we don't want to run out of fuel yeah. while we're in, in flight. Yeah. And and is there anything you have to do with these models besides just fly them around? Is there anything you have to do before you fly them? Yes, normally these models are actually tested in wind tunnels. So they're looking for aerodynamics and all, and they're looking for stability, and they're looking for balance. So they have to test it through moments of inertia tests and test it in the wind tunnel before they actually fly it. Oh, okay. And we have a lot of wind tunnels here at NASA Langley, don't we? Yes, we do. We have about 28 different wind tunnels. And the reason why we have different wind tunnels is because we have built several different scale models and all these models are tested in different wind tunnels looking for different flight characteristics. Gotcha. And you have a, a model of a wind tunnel that you are gonna show us today. Yes, I do. And what's so unique about that model that I have here is that it, it displays and shows you how lift is created. So when we turn the, the wind tunnel on, so you'll see a stream of airflow flowing over the, the Air Force shape. So it shows you the faster moving air and the slower moving air underneath, which create a greater pressure. And so the Air Force shape will move up as you cut the wind tunnel on. Okay, so it shows us how you fly, how you get that lift. Yes, you do. So for instance, it's like on the runway. So the pilot, when he's flying the, the airplane on the runway, he has to gather up enough speed so when the wind gets underneath of the airfoil, and then it creates a lift, so the airplane lifts. Very cool. So Sam, how long have you worked here at NASA Langley? Yes, I've been here at NASA Langley for 34 years. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. So how did you end up here? What inspired you to work for NASA? Actually, as a middle schooler, I seen NASA on television, you know, for the launch of the space shuttle. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, at the time, I had no idea that uh, NASA had actually built research model aircraft and airplanes for research, mm -hmm. although it is an acronym, aeronautics. <laughs> so I love math and science. I like working with my hands. 
So I had the STEM foundation that actually got me here. So as I proceeded to, uh, to higher education, I, when I graduated from college, um, NASA had called me, you know, a month after I graduated and asked me would I take a position in aerospace and models and composites. That's so cool. I bet that was really exciting. It was. I was really excited. I couldn't believe it. It just felt like a dream. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been here ever since. And I've been here ever since. It's been 34 good years. Yeah. Well, why don't you tell our students, what, would you, what advice would you give them if they'd like to do something similar to what you do? Yes, my advice to you students, you know, if you're interested in a career at NASA Langley, find out who you really are and not who you want to be. You know, find out what excites you, you know, what, what makes you tick, if you will. And then that kind of can be a gauge of, you know, what area you want to go. Absolutely, absolutely. That's some great advice. And we really want to thank you for coming out and talking to us today, showing us uh, some of the cool projects that you've worked on. And to our students out there, join us again for our next tour stop. And thank you for joining us. Take care. <laughs>